Welcome back to Go Big and Go Homeschool. My name is Maggie. I'm the mama of 10, and we are going into our 18th year of homeschooling. I can hardly believe it. This is a really exciting year for me because my ninth child, Israel, who will be six soon, he's super cute, you're gonna love him, is going to learn to read. And of course, I'm going to be using my favorite program. It's simple, it's effective, and best of all, it is absolutely free. I can't wait to share it with you, and Israel can't wait to star in a video to help you kind of see how this program looks in action. But first, I'd like to read you a story. <clears throat> there once was a nice young lady named Hazel. Hello, nice to meet you. Hazel was a school teacher. It was the 1920s, before the Department of Education or the mass production of school curriculum, so Hazel used a chalkboard and a few basic books and happily taught her students to read. It was a labor of love for her. Cat, bat, dog, dog. When Hazel's children were born, she took a break from teaching to raise her family. Of course, she taught her own children to read, and she liked to share funny stories about those times. She retained her passion for education and watched with interest the changes in America's schools. Her interest grew to concern when she saw how the neighbor's children struggled to learn to read. Over the decades, a new and highly touted method of teaching reading had emerged, the whole word method. Some called it recognition or look say. Hazel later wrote, It was like watching a swarm of locusts descending on schools from coast to coast. And soon Fox was taboo. Sounds awful, Hazel. Anyway, as the whole word method gained steam and people began to make a lot of money off it, phonics instruction all but disappeared and a lot of life happened to Hazel. She wrote an important manuscript about reading disabilities, raised her three children, beat cancer, and went back to teaching. She was pleased to be teaching first grade, but she was saddened to see so many of her students fail to learn to read under the required whole word curriculum. Opposers to the method were blacklisted, and she was too nervous to teach phonics. Fortunately, classrooms in her area were overcrowded and there was a teacher shortage, and results became important. So Hazel became emboldened to teach phonics again. She allotted a half hour per day and used only the chalkboard, though later she was thrilled to discover a newfangled overhead projector. Bat, bat, dog, dog, bat, dog, dog, dog. Her students thrived, and the years passed happily as many confident readers graduated from her classroom. Hazel's daughter asked if she could show her how to teach phonics as well, because she wanted to volunteer to teach adults to read. This she did successfully for many years. Of course, Hazel was not the only one alarmed by the nationwide reading crisis. Many determined people fought to get phonics instruction back into schools. So Hazel wrote up a short little booklet explaining very clear, simple instructions how to implement phonics instruction for 30 minutes per day in first grade classrooms. Her program took four months, early September to winter break, for first graders to gain reading proficiency. Of course, many parents got a hold of the little booklet too. Hazel insisted that it always be free to anyone who wanted it. As quickly as the booklets could be printed, they disappeared like chocolate chip cookies at dinner time, according to her son. It became a worldwide sensation. It took a lot of work from a lot of people, but the booklet remains free to this day. The name of this little gem is Reading Made Easy with Blend Phonics for First Grade. In 2008, I printed this PDF and I sat my six-year-old on one side and my eight-year-old on the other, and we used only manuscript paper, which is that stuff you can get from the dollar store, 
it's got the solid upper line and the solid lower line and then the dotted line in the middle. I do prefer the one that has pink and blue, but it doesn't really matter. And a couple of good pencils. With, and that was it. That was all we needed. There was very little prep work involved. And those girls learned to read so quickly and simply. It was a good time for all. I'm happy to report that those little girls grew up graduated from our homeschool and continue to be voracious readers and very strong writers to this day. Now, shortly after teaching them, I taught an eager five-year-old. I don't remember how long it took. I want to say that it probably took about three months. And then I had a little six-year-old boy and a little seven-year-old boy, and I sat them on either side of me just like I had with their big sisters. And that took a little longer because boys. I still want to say it took under four months to teach those boys to read. I went on to repeat this process with one child after another, and I was always really pleased with how this program worked for us. I have very strong readers and writers, and I look forward to teaching Israel and then his little sister, and then I will be able to say I've taught all 10 of my kids to read. Can you say good morning? Good morning. What's your name? Israel. And how old are you going to be on your birthday in a couple weeks? Six. Are you excited to learn to read? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you're good at writing things, aren't you? You like yeah. to draw and you like to write. So let me show our friends how we're all set up here. You have your manuscript paper and a good pencil with a good eraser. I have our PDF open to the first page of the actual lesson. I have my manuscript paper and a pencil, and where are we sitting? On your bed. On my bed, because it's comfy, huh? And yeah. because it's loud downstairs and the table's a mess. I don't normally like to do this on the bed because it can be hard for a child to position their arm correctly, but Riz doesn't have too hard of a time writing and he's pretty comfortable here so we're just gonna push ahead and we're gonna start we're gonna do a, a couple of words from the I list and a couple of words from the O list of course there's a lot to consider when you're picking a program everybody's life circumstances are going to be different some children have learning differences and you'll want to take all of that into account get the advice of seasoned homeschoolers who've taught their kids to read reach out to experts if need be, but I really do believe that this free program is quality at its bones that the majority of families can use and enjoy. And we are practicing the short sounds. Do you remember the short sound of I? A. I. That's correct. And what's the short sound of O? Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. So why don't you pick a few words fix. I want to do fix. you want to do fix. Okay. I already know how to write fix. Watch my pencil carefully. Remember, we're going to write it perfect. Okay, so we're going to start here above the dotted line. And we're going to go left and down. And we're going to touch that bottom line. Very good. Now we're going to go left to right with our line to finish it off. Good. As a bonus, all the kids learn to write as they learn to read. This was something that I picked up from the Writing Road to Reading a few years before. I didn't really implement much else from the book, but that did stick with me and I wanted to plug it in to Hazel's program. It has a lot of advantages. I invite you to read up on the Spalding Method or the Writing Road to Reading to see if that makes sense to you. It's been really, really successful in our family. I starts with a line, so it can be very close to the F. We don't have to leave much room, and we're just going to go top to bottom, and then dot it. We don't need to leave much room for our X. Going to go left to right down. We're going to take up that whole space in between the dotted line and the bottom line. Now, that's very good how it turned out. Remember that next time you write it, we're going to go top to bottom, 
top to bottom. It makes it faster, okay? Now this is the only time of day that I ask for my children to write the word perfectly. Top to bottom, left to right, do it. When they are getting into a little more difficult writing, when they're starting to write whole sentences, and they really need to write with more ease and to write more quickly, they have those rules and those those habits, that muscle memory to fall back on. Now, I don't want writing to be a drag for my kids, so I keep these lessons very, very short. When we first begin, we're really only going to do three or four words. We're going to keep it to just about 10 minutes. They're going to get to pick their own words. They get to say funny sentences um, to show that they know what the word means, and we just keep it really light and fun. The rest of the day, they can have fun with writing whoever they like. They can break all the rules. If they're writing a letter to grandma, if they're writing a thank you card to somebody, then they can come to me and say, hey, look what I did. And I'm not going to correct them. I'm not going to point out that they wrote it backwards or whatever, because I really want them to enjoy writing. But they do have those good lessons and those good habits that they picked up during the formal phonics time. Now, please put your finger right here and we'll measure a good space to start our next word. Why don't you erase that and try it again? There's a couple things that we want to do better. Excellent. Now watch my pencil carefully. And because Riz is right-handed, I am sitting on his right-hand side so that he can see as I'm forming the letters. It could be a little trickier if um, I was sitting on the other side. Now, for A, we're going to leave a little more room because it starts with a circle. Are you watching? I'm going to start up here on the line, and I'm going to curve down and touch, come back up, and do a straight line down. Let's see you try. Oh, wonderful. Sometimes we break the rules. Nobody says it has to be zigzag instead of zag zig. Awesome job. Okay, now read with me. Let's say the sounds. F. F. Fix. X. Fix. Z. Ag. You say it. Zag. Zag. Zig. Zig. Awesome job. What does this say? Which one? This one? Yeah. Let's say the sounds. D. Aunt. Dot. Dot. You want to write that word? Let's do it. Child who completes Hazel's entire program will have learned 44 phonetic elements that allow them to read 85% of the words in the English language. Now, now the rest of the words, I have assigned the very unremarkable term rule breakers, and my kids and I kind of make it a game to find them and just kind of shake our head at how crazy English is. Okay, there's a couple things. I'm glad that you picked that one, Riz, because it's really easy to mix up lowercase d and lowercase b. Am I right? It's easy to get them mixed up. Watch my mouth. When I say d, What's, what shape is my mouth forming? An O. An O. You try it. Say, duh. Duh. It starts with a circle. D does. Just like dog. Okay, so watch my pencil carefully. It's like A or G that we formed. We're going to start here. And go down and touch. We're going to keep our pencil there. Just like that. We started with a circle. Now, Watch my lips. B. B. You try it. B. B. Do you see how your lips made a line? B starts with a line. D starts with a circle. Now you know a trick. On the left, I would put a line for a B because that is the shape that my lips make when I say B. We're working on dog. So you go ahead and you start your D with a circle right on the dotted line. There you go. Excellent. 
Now, I've provided a link to the PDF so that you can print Hazel's book. The first several pages are just giving a little bit of history, which I shared in the story, and um, a little bit of instruction to the parent on how to use the program. There's really only about 20 or 25 pages of the actual curriculum, and it really boils down to just lists of words. So basically what you're doing is each day you open the book, see where you left off. You have a list of words as examples of whatever phonetic rule you're learning. And I just have the child take two or three or four words, depending on their ability and their eagerness. And we write them very, very carefully together. Don Potter is one of those people who work tirelessly to make sure that Hazel's booklet remains free and available. He has two websites chock full of fascinating educational resources. Most of them are free. Mr. Potter also wrote a couple of books to use alongside Hazel's. I haven't used them, but they look great, so I'll link those as well. Now, teaching blend phonics this way is incredibly easy but there is still a lot that should happen before you begin. So be sure to check out my other video on what to do with a child before you begin to teach reading. Bye. Bye. Thanks for helping me, Riz. You're welcome.